Hi everybody, it's Luann again here with uh, more genealogy uh, videos. And today we're going to talk about um, something that happened at the uh, diamond market in 1894. It's not directly related to my family or our family, but there is a relationship uh, with Ignatz, I believe. I believe this to be true. Remember that Ignatz married Anna Whirling Muller. She had been married before to a Muller after our uh, great-grandmother died. Well, Anna's family, um, her dad was named Daniel and she had a brother named Daniel. So when I was doing research, a story about a Daniel Whirling came up. This is spelled W-E-R-L-I-N-G. A story about a Daniel Whirling came up, but I have determined that this was not her brother nor her father, but I do believe it was her cousin. There were not that many Whirlings living in Pittsburgh, but they all lived in the same area, They're buried in St. Michael Cemetery. I truly believe that these people were related, but I haven't been able to establish that. And since they're not really blood relatives, I haven't done a ton of research on it. But, um, but when I found this story, that came up it has just fascinated me <laughs> and um, I think I hope you find it fascinating as well but before I get to the story I wanted to talk a little bit about the market square diamond square itself I did a little bit of research and I found out that diamond square was actually planned into the city of Pittsburgh way back in 1764 that's when the architects created this block and this public commons and they called it diamond square or diamond market in fact this square was so important that this is the, the location of the first allegheny county courthouse and jail and it was also the home of the first newspaper which was the pittsburgh gazette and that was established in 1786 so with the courthouse and the jail there and all different businesses i'm sure around there they decided in 1794 to establish a market house and stalls and this was on the eastern half of the square eventually of course the courthouse moved and we are going to talk about that later uh, because courthouse comes into play in the story i'm going to tell you but what i want to show you now is a picture or it's actually a drawing of uh, that original courthouse and the market stalls that were um, in Diamond Square. So here is a drawing of that original courthouse which I'm assuming is the one with the steeple though it doesn't specify that I'm um, just assuming that and then you see to the right the market stalls and um, you know the, the public market that was established in 1794. I want you all to look at the building uh, to the right of what we think is the courthouse. It's a four-story building there with kind of a hip roof on the top. But when I saw that building, I said to myself, oh my gosh, I believe that is the building that the Hotel Babinger was in. The roof is different, but the building itself with the windows across the front, four, four, and then three, and four-story building. I'm gonna show you again the picture of the Hotel Babinger, and truly, I think this might be the building. So here's that shot of the Hotel Babinger beyond the market houses, but in this, I was able to find this picture which shows the street, where you see horse-drawn carriages, and you see stalls outside the market, and then, in the back, beyond the market, is the Hotel Balmager. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in with my, my iPad, just, and hopefully it'll focus. So that's the Hotel Babinger, that tall building in the mid-ground. You know, not, not way in the back, but the middle ground, right behind the market houses. And you see it is a four-story building. And you see the windows. On there, it's three and two, three, and then one, two, three single windows. But the end result is it is 
the same number of windows that was drawn in that drawing uh, that I just previously showed you. To me, these buildings really resemble one another, and I truly believe that that building in the drawing with the old original courthouse may indeed be the building that the Hotel Babinger was located in. I also wanted to show you this picture of um, the Diamond Square. This is dated May 26, 1928. And I just want you to see, look at the trolley car. Look at the crowds, look how many people are there. I mean, it is just very, very busy. So I just wanted you to see that. This is a, a bit later than when um, Ignatz would have had the hotel, but not that far into the future, 1928. If you remember from my last video, I talked about how Anna Babinger had written to the paper and various people protesting the demolishing of the market houses that were in Diamond Square as of 19, you know, 14, when, when Ignatz died. Uh, she very much opposed it, and she said they needed a market there. Well, those buildings were torn down, but in its place was built the Diamond Market buildings, okay? And they were um, built in 1916, I believe it was. So it wasn't very long that there was not a market there. And the Diamond Market buildings stood for nearly 50 years. You can see in this picture, uh, this is from 1951, but I just have it here because you can see the Diamond Market building there in Diamond Square. So um, these, the, the Diamond Market buildings were torn down in 1961. And that's when Market Square was turned into an open air space. But what's interesting to note is those four squares that are left, um, squares or rectangles that are left in Market Square that are landscaped and where people can sit. Now I haven't been there for a while, but, um, and I know there's no traffic go that goes through that, that center area anymore. But those four squares that were there, those are the footprints of the market house buildings that were torn down. Okay, so now we're gonna to get to the story that I really wanna tell you today of the murder in the market. In the year 1894, there were 23 murders in the city of Pittsburgh, and this one was one of the most notorious. There was a couple named Daniel and Barbara Whirling Barbara's maiden name was either Buck or Bach. It's discrepant in the various things that I find. I'm going to go with Buck today, but it could be Bach, B-O-C-K. I'm going to go with B-U-C-K. So Barbara Buck, she came from a family who had lived on the South Side for a long time. Daniel, his uh, mother had a stand at the market, and he also had a stand at the market. So he and Barbara got married, but Daniel was... A drunk. Um, he was an alcoholic. He was unable to uh, work the stand, so his wife took it over. And that's the way she supported the family. They had two children. Uh, at the time of the murder, their children were ages 9 and 13. So Daniel was a well-known troublemaker on the South Side. And I'm going to show you some articles I found in the paper about him. So he was a wife beater and an alcoholic gotten multiple uh, sentences in the workhouse but i'm going to right now i'm going to turn the camera around i'm going to show you some of these articles about that i found about him the first article i found where he was uh she alleged that he had beat her and uh, he was sent to jail for 20 days this was in june of 1890 again may of 1891 Danny Whirling charged with perjury. She said he would, he perjured himself because he swore he wouldn't drink anymore, but he did. And then he beat her up again. So he was arrested again. 1892, he and another guy are given 10 days in jail for disorderly conduct. October of 1892. He had just been in the workhouse, was released, coming home, went to work for a few days, and then he went home and started abusing his family and smashing the furniture. Again, sent to the workhouse for 60 days. So the last time that Daniel got sent to the workhouse 
1894. And he swore on the way to the workhouse that he was going to uh, kill his wife. How he got into the workhouse at that time, though, was he had had an argument with his wife. He left home taking their nine-year-old son with them, with him, and he went on a drinking binge. And he ended up smashing a jewelry store window somewhere in Pittsburgh and was arrested. The son was taken home by the policeman. He was sent to the workhouse. From what I understand, Barbara had nothing to do with it. But on the way to the workhouse, he said to the person who was taking him there, when I get out, I am going to kill her. So he was released on April 7th of 1894. During his absence while he was in the workhouse, Barbara, who had been able to buy themselves a little house on the south side, she couldn't take it anymore, and she abandoned that house, sold what they had, and moved in with her mother, who lived um, in what is now the north side, or Allegheny City. So when he got out of um, the workhouse, and he went to the house where they had lived, he found it deserted, and that enraged him. So he went to his mother's house, changed his clothes, and headed to the market, because this was a Saturday morning, and Barbara was working her stand at the market. He went to the market and he spoke to her for a little bit. We don't know what was said, but we're assuming, the, you know, the papers assume he was asking her for money. And then he left. Well, what happened was he left the market. He went to a pawn shop. He pawned his pocket watch. He bought a revolver. He then bought ammunition. He went into the basement of a nearby saloon, loaded the gun, went to the market, and while she was handing a cabbage to one of her customers, he came up from behind her and shot her. She ran. He shot her again. She fell down into the door of the market, and he shot her again. This was done in front of hundreds of people who were at the market that day, including their 13-year-old daughter, Mary, who was helping out at the stand, and Daniel's own mother, who had her own stand a little ways away from this one. Reaction from the people at the marketplace was immediate. They went after him. Butchers came after him with cleavers. Somebody went and secured a rope. They were going to lynch him right then and there. The police arrived just in time. They took him to jail. And, you know, there are discrepant reports of this. But one newspaper article says that both Daniel and his wife's body were transported in the same wagon and that he kicked her and said he was glad she was dead. So they took her to the morgue, and they took him to the police station, then on to jail. So while Barbara's body was at the morgue, her sisters came with their own children and bringing her two children, Barbara's two children, came to the morgue. Not understanding what a morgue was, they thought they were going to be able to find Barbara alive, and they come to find out she was dead. And uh, somebody asked Mary, the daughter, if, you know, could she say what happened? And she said that her dad shot her mother and nobody stopped him. Um, Barbara was buried at St. Michael's Cemetery, and it was reported in one of the papers that thousands of people were there to see her buried. Of course, uh, Daniel was charged with the crime. He was put on trial. The trial took place two months later in June of 1894. And defense tried to say that he was insane because of um, the alcoholism. But he was convicted of uh, murder in the first degree and was sentenced to death by hanging. Of course, that went into appeals and did go to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. But they upheld it in November of 1894. However, Daniel was not executed until uh, July of 1895. I wanted to mention that his wife um, had come up twice with the money to send him to something called the Keeley Institute. There was one in Pittsburgh for the treatment of alcoholism. And this involved uh, tonics, which we, they think was just alcohol given in reduced amounts day by day, plus injections of some kind of gold cure, um, you know, 
that that Keeley Institute was around until the 1960s, but uh, I don't know if it was ever really a real thing or just, you know, uh, quackery. Here is a picture of Barbara Worling. And here's the article that describes the execution of Daniel Worling. There his picture is right there. It is reported that spending time in jail and becoming sober, you know, by force, changed uh, Daniel. And he was a model prisoner, and he hoped up until the very last that the governor would, you know, pardon him. But that did not happen, and he was hung. Hundreds of people stood outside uh, the jail building. Now I'm going to show you a picture of the... The court, I told you I would show you pictures of the courthouses. After the original courthouse left Diamond Square, they built a, uh, a courthouse in 1842. And that one burned, and then they built what is the current courthouse. So I'm going to show you those pictures now. So this is the courthouse that was built in 1842 and was destroyed by fire in 1882. And this is a picture of the the new courthouse. This is from about 1888, this picture. And what's interesting, you see up in the corner, there's a picture of uh, natural gas geysers in the river. I couldn't find a picture of the uh, jail yard where Daniel was hung, but this is the interior of the courthouse, the interior courtyard of the present day courthouse. And this is a picture of the Bridge of Size, the, uh, the footbridge that connects the jail to the courthouse. I remember my dad telling me about this when I was a kid, why it was called the Bridge of Size, because it was taking prisoners to the jail after being convicted. Okay, so that's it for this video. Next up, uh, I'm going to be talking about another relative of Ignatz um, and a man who deserted his family in order to become a cowboy. So stay tuned. Bye.